Well, not here, but her. <laughs> but anyway, the kids march around the pews just like there's a house full. They sing and give it everything they've got just like there's a house full. Amen. Oh, God, give us some of that. Amen. Hallelujah. Where we don't let little things, you know, affect the way we worship the Lord. Many times if it's not the right song leader, well, we can't get in the Spirit. Or if it's not the right song, we just can't get in the Spirit. Well, if that's the case, it ain't going to take much to stop you, huh? Amen? Take away your song leader and your music and you just go on to hell. We're going to have to learn how to worship the Lord. Amen? Like these people over here do. In these red countries up here, in these different places where they're restric have the restricted nations, where they gather together by candlelight with only one Scripture, Mama, maybe, and worship God all in spirit and in truth. Amen? Not in emotion, but in spirit and in truth. I want to talk to you tonight for just a few minutes. And I'm a little bit like the kids. I don't prepare a sermon. I don't say, Lord, now if there's three people there, give me what you want me to preach. If there's a hundred people there, give me what you want me to preach. You get what He gives me, no matter if He's one, two, three, or four hundred. If you go with me tonight, I want to talk about Christmas for a few minutes and the celebration of the birth of Christ. And I know tonight you might think, well, we're going to go over there to Matthew. And we probably will get there. But this thing started long before Matthew ever picked up a pen and began to write. Amen? This thing started actually before the Scripture that we're going to start in tonight. And we're going to start in Genesis, the third chapter. But this thing actually started before the foundation of the world. John, in the book of Revelation, says that he saw a lamb as it were slain before the foundation of the world. Jesus Christ had laid down His will before the foundation of the world was ever formed. And we find here, talking about the virgin birth, many, many, you see, God doesn't do, just throw something out there just to be doing it. All of these things that we see in our Christmas scenes, the, the wise men and the, the shepherds, and the, they talk about the star, and we talk about Bethlehem, and we talk about the manger, and we talk about the virgin birth. God doesn't just, well, I think I'll let it happen this way. God has a purpose and a reason for everything that He does. That's why He says line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. All of His Word fits together like a puzzle and there is no just, well, God, I'll just, God don't get up in the morning and say, I'll just let things happen today. Amen. I'll just leave it alone and just let things go like they are. I'm going to go back to bed. I don't feel good. Amen? No, God is always has a plan. And all the way back in the book of Genesis, we find the virgin birth birth prophesied that would take place that we read anyway over there in the book of Matthew. Genesis the third chapter and the 14th verse. And this is after the serpent has beguiled Eve and has deceived them into, or however you want to word it, got them to eat the forbidden fruit, I mean of the tree that they were not supposed to eat. And this is the Lord dealing out punishment. And the 14th verse, the third chapter of Genesis says, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed, and here's something you might miss unless you stop and look at it, and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Brother Billy, where do you see the virgin birth in that Scripture? He said her seed. Amen? If you read throughout the Old Testament, you will find the Lord talking about Abraham's seed. You will find Him talking about Isaac's seed. You will find Him talking about Jacob's seed. You will find Him a lot of times talking about the lineage of different men. Amen? But here He said between your seed and her seed because the seed she will carry will not be polluted with man. Amen? It will be a divine seed whenever she is moved upon by the Holy Ghost and conceives this Son of God, amen, that would be born in that little town of Bethlehem. And He would tell us in Genesis it would be her seed. Amen. Not man's seed. This was not, you know, some of the new versions that I started to say we have, we don't have. Amen. We stick with the King James Version and not the paraphrase books that they've got out. 
But many of them take out the phrase virgin whenever they talk about Mary. As if it's not important. I think that's pretty important tonight. Amen? That she was a virgin, undefiled, not touched by man, but conceived. The conception took place of the Holy Ghost. And we find here in the book of Genesis where God is prophesying of the virgin birth already, all the way back to Genesis. It wasn't just that God thought over there whenever you come down through the timeline and you get to the time of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and the time of the disciples. God doesn't just decide, you know what? I think I'll let a virgin do this thing. No, this thing had been decided long past, long time before that. Amen? The Bible says in Isaiah 7 and 14, and you might want to write these down because I'm going to jump around to a few of them and I don't know if you'll catch me before I move on to something else. But Isaiah 7 and 14, this is 700 years before the birth of Christ. Isaiah would say, Therefore the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call His name Emmanuel. And we've been reading the Christmas story and the, script, the Christmas Scriptures during this week of homeschool. And the kids are learning that that word Emmanuel interpreted means God with us. And I think that may have been in the song that Brother Tyler and Sister Hannah sung there at the last. In Isaiah 9 and 6, Isaiah would say this, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Letting us know that this is not just an ordinary baby that would be born. The child that was born, Jesus, His physical body came into existence that night when He came forth from the womb of His mother Mary. But Jesus, the eternal Son of God, had always been, Amen. will always be, Amen. Amen. He is God in the flesh, Amen. Amen. Always been. He didn't just He just didn't be, become that night. Whenever the, the Hebrew children were thrown in the fiery furnace, and the king looked over there, and if you'll read the King James translation, it says that there is one in there that looks like the Son of God, Amen. So Jesus, already His eternal being, His eternal, the eternal part of Jesus, well, has already always been. Amen? Always been. In the eternity past, Jesus existed. But in order to become the sacrifice that man had to have, He had to have an earth, earthen vessel. So on the night in Bethlehem, there would be a child born. But there would be a Son given. The eternal Son of God. And the government shall be upon His shoulder. This is one of my favorite scriptures. And His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Oh, we're talking about Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. And this, listen, all the way down, even to the place of His birth, the Bible would prophesy. In Micah, the, second, the fifth chapter, the second verse, He would talk about Bethlehem. Micah 5 and 2. But thou, Bethlehem, Euphrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me a, the Bible says, to be ruler of Israel, whose going forth, listen, who's he talking about? He's talking about Jesus. Whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Jesus didn't just happen. On Christmas night. Jesus didn't just happen in the, in the manger in Bethlehem. His, his natural body did. Oh, but He had been from eternal, from, from old, from, from ages past, from, from eternity past. Jesus has always been. Amen. He's always been. And all of the things that we see and that we include on our Christmas cards and in our manger scenes and all the different things, God had purposes for each one of these things. One thing, He wanted them to know that this wasn't just or, no ordinary baby because He was birthed of a virgin. Amen? That ain't no ordinary baby to be birthed of a virgin. I don't have to go into no details on that. You don't know what I'm talking about. This woman was, had never known man before. And here she is with child. And the Bible says in Matthew 2, you can go with me because we're going to be there for a few minutes. Matthew the second chapter. And those are just a few of the very few of the prophecies of Jesus in the Old Testament. Some scholars say that there's over 400 prophecies in the Old Testament alone that Jesus fulfilled with His birth, with His life, with His death, with His resurrection, and on down the line. 
Matthew 2 and 1, the Bible says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Do you hear that? Where did Micah say that Jesus was going to be born? It said that He was going to be born in Bethlehem. Even though Bethlehem was small when compared to the thousands of Judah, this man, this, this, this child that was, that, that was from old and from everlasting would be born and come out of Bethlehem. Now I know we don't like taxes and we don't like censuses and all of that, but God used that to get Mary and Joseph back to the place where He had prophesied in the book of Micah where the baby would be born. Amen. All things work together for good. Whenever Mary was riding on that donkey on that long journey back to, to Bethlehem because they had to go back there for the census and the taxing and everything that was going on, even though it was uncomfortable for her, Amen. It had to be uncomfortable for her. She was pregnant. Riding on a donkey ain't comfortable for somebody that ain't pregnant, but it had to be uncomfortable. Yet God's hand was in all of that. When they knocked on the door of that inn and, and looked for somewhere to rest and they were turned away, even God's hand was in that because He was going to be born in a lowly place. Listen, this was a king, but He wasn't going to come for with a royal scepter, not the kind that man was looking for. All the, the Jews at that time were looking for a king, somebody to overthrow the Roman Empire, but they didn't understand this, this Jesus because, see, His kingdom was not of this world. Amen. He spoke to them of a kingdom, but it was a spiritual kingdom. Amen. He didn't come forth with a weapon to destroy and take down the Roman Empire. He came forth with a weapon to destroy and take down the empire of the devil. Of all oh, hallelujah. He was God in the flesh. And it was prophesied even down to the place where He would be born that He would come forth out of Bethlehem. So we find that in Scripture. We find in Genesis 49 and 10 that He would be Born from the what? The tribe of Judah. The Bible says in Genesis 14, uh, 49 and 10, excuse me, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. We're talking about the Savior's birth. I told somebody today, actually, I think I posted on Facebook. This week in homeschool, we're learning the Christmas story. And so far, the kids can tell you, we have learned about Mary, Joseph. We've learned about the angel Gabriel. Today, we learned about some shepherds, didn't we, Brother Isaac? And we learned about the heavenly host and the angels that appeared to the shepherds. There's not been one mention of Santa Claus. I even looked on down through the pages there of the book that we're reading in. He still ain't in there. No Rudolph, no Frosty. Because that ain't what Christmas is about. Amen. Christmas is the celebration of the only begotten Son of God being born into the world to take away the sins of the world. When John would stand there on the sandy banks of the Jordan River and he would look up and see his cousin coming, he would say, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. When he was in that manger, laying there wrapped in swaddling clothes, you could have looked at him and said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. When Isaiah stood and prophesied 700 years before his birth that there would be a child born and a son given, it was the Lamb of God that was given to take away the sin of the world. That's what Christmas is all about. Into a world that had no hope, hope was born. <laughs> Boy, I can't think of no better reason to celebrate. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I can't think of but one other time in the history of mankind that's more important. And that had to do with the cross. Amen. Other than the birth of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And He was born in a stable in Bethlehem. And the Lord had all of these things lined out in everything. See, sometimes we get discouraged because we're waiting for God to do something. God's people had been prophesied that a deliverer would come for years and years. Some of them had given up, turned to other gods because it never had happened. There have been things that God's told you He's going to do and it ain't happened. And you get weary in your journey. But hold on. He's coming. Oh, huh. my, my, my. The devil knew what was going on. Amen. He tried his best to kill him off. Tried his best to kill him. Tried his best to stop it. But it didn't work. So we find that he was birthed of the house of David. Just like the prophets of old said he would be. 
We find that He was born of a virgin just like the prophets of old said He would be. We find that He was born in Jerusalem just like the prophets of old said that He would be. How miraculous was this event? Well, this, miraculous was, this event was so miraculous. If you'll turn with me to Luke, the second chapter, in the first verse. Luke, the second chapter, in the first verse. We find angels commissioned to shout it from the heavens. And I challenge you tonight to find another place that's just like this one right here. The Bible says in Luke, we start in the first verse, the second chapter. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one in his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. There you go, folks. How about that? Because he was the house of the lineage of David. How about that right there? He'd be born in Bethlehem. He'll be of the tribe of Judah. He'll be of the seed of David. And all of that right there that God had prophesied. And it says all went to be taxed every one of their cities. So we find them going there to Bethlehem because that's where Joseph was from. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she would be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Now there's a heavenly host on their way to announce what has taken place. And we find, and listen, this was a time whenever Bethlehem was jam-packed full of people. So many people, there was no room for Mary and Joseph to find a place in the inn. And we find out on the hillsides of Bethlehem, just outside, in the hills of old Judea, as one songwriter put it, we find shepherds. Bethlehem was full. No doubt there were religious men in there. No doubt there were spiritual men in there. Yet God commissions angels to go and talk to shepherds. Why? Not just because, well, there's some guys down there. Don't look like they've got nothing to do. Let me send these angels. No. Remember, everything that God does, He has a purpose for. Jesus would call Himself what? In John the 10th chapter, the Good Shepherd. Amen. It's no coincidence that the angels stopped by this little shepherd field to announce the birth of Christ not to the educated men of that day. Oh, how, you talk about a picture of whosoever will let Him come. He would announce the birth of His Son, His only begotten Son, to a bunch of men they weren't outcast of society, but they were pretty close, amen? They stunk. They were not, most of them were not well educated. If they were, they'd have a different job besides being a shepherd, amen? So they're out there. they couldn't perform the, the clean duties because they stunk and it's dirty, amen? But God commissions the heavenly host of the angels to go and tell these men about the birth of His Son. Oh, that will do something for us tonight. Many times, you know, the church looks at people and thinks, well, God can't use them. God can't use them. Oh, here's a guy He can use. Yeah, my, my, my. God's always used people that the church has turned their back on and religion has decided they're not good enough to be used. Amen? But God sends out a... He commissions a host, a heavenly host of angels to go and visit these shepherds. It wasn't the priest that He sent them to. It wasn't the Pharisees. There were Pharisees, no doubt, in Bethlehem. There were scribes and there were Sadducees. Amen. But they were sad, you see, because they didn't really know God. There were people like that He could have sent them to, but He says, you see them little old lowly shepherds down there? You go down there and you announce the birth of My Son to these men. So we find the Good Shepherd's birth being proclaimed to shepherds. And I know there's a lot of debate on this, but I tend to agree with some of the scholars whenever they talk about the sheep that were out there that these shepherds watched. Many of the scholars believe that these were not just sheep, but they were sheep that were of the fold of the sacrificial lambs, the ones that would be sacrificed and took, taken in to, to spill their blood for the sins of the people. And if that is the case, 
That puts even more significance on the fact that these angels would announce the birth of the only begotten, the Lamb of God, the only begotten Son, the Lamb that would take away the sin of the world, the Lamb whose blood would be shed on the altar that we call the cross, the final and authoritative altar for the sins of all mankind. That puts a little bit more significance on this right here. If they were sacrificial sheep, <laughs> hallelujah, these angels come by to declare the birth of the Lamb of God to the shepherds that are watching the sacrificial lambs. And like I said, I know that's debatable about many, but oh my goodness, that sounds good to me. I believe God has a reason, a purpose, a time for everything. Amen? I believe that He has ordained things. He ordained this night from eternity past uh, when the time had been accomplished that Mary, would, that He knew exactly the, the stable. It, would, it may have been a cave. Amen? Wherever it was at, He knew exactly where she was at and that the babe would be wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. And here He's announcing it to these old shepherd boys that stunk, wasn't well educated, Oh, but God likes those kind of people. Amen. Uh, he can use people that don't think they're anything. Amen. He has a hard time using you and you're stuck up hypocrite because you think you're all it. But He can use you whenever you think, I ain't nothing. Congratulations. You're a candidate for God to use. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't ever, ever, ever get full of yourself because God can't use you if you do. Amen. Hallelujah. Got to squeeze it out of you. My goodness. Where are we at? Ninth verse. <clears throat> Second chapter of Luke, ninth verse, I think is where we're at. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, talking about the shepherds, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. Well, I imagine they were. Night after night, them old boys been sitting out there watching the sheep. Only thing they've heard is bad, bad. Unless they heard a wolf and had to scare them off, or unless they heard some kind of wild animal, for the most part, all they've ever heard was bad. And they sitting out there, probably wasn't drinking Maxwell House, but whatever it is they were doing, they sitting out there by the fire maybe. And all of a sudden, the angel of the Lord comes upon them. The glory of the Lord begins to shine round about them. And they were so afraid. They were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger and suddenly... See, he ain't done yet. First it says he starts out with the angel of the Lord. Amen? Probably Gabriel. Don't know for sure who it was. The angel of the Lord came upon them. But then, this wasn't a job just for one angel. Oh, Hallelujah. Probably turned to the host and said, boys, get your harps. Oh, I got a job for you. And this is going to take one more, more than one of you fellas to announce it. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Oh, you're talking about a celebration. The skies lit up with the glory of God. Them old shepherd boys taking it all in. Might probably been shunned by the priesthood. Probably been shunned by most of everybody in the normal walk of life. Didn't want to have nothing to do with them. Oh, and here God is revealing the birth of His Son to these old boys. Oh, my, my, my. Don't just send one angel to do it. But He sends a heavenly host of angels. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away, from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. My goodness, ain't that good? And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. So we find a heavenly host. We find a virgin. We find the town of Bethlehem. We find Him being born in a lowly state. We find Him being born and laid in a manger. 
He didn't have a royal place to lay his head. He didn't have a royal robe to be wrapped in. He wasn't born into royalty. His daddy wasn't a prince. His daddy, I'm talking about his earthly father, his stepdad, however you want to word it. He was not born into a family that had money. He was born into the family of a carpenter. Amen? Talking about, oh my, 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 the son of the living God being born and laid in a manger. And that ain't all. You might think, wow, a virgin birth, that's, that ought to be it. God don't have shows, nothing else. You might think those angels appearing to the shepherds, that must be all that God did because He's busy with other stuff. Surely He's not going to do more with this. Oh, Matthew, the second chapter, this is where we was at a while ago. I told you I was going to stay there for a while and we moved on real quick. Matthew, the second chapter, the first verse. Let's talk about the wise men. You want to? More importantly than that, let's talk about the star that led the wise men. Amen. Oh, I like this. Y'all look at me like I fell out of well. Listen to this. And you know, the wise men were not at the manger. Amen. When we set up our manger scenes, I know that many times the wise men are gathered there, but they didn't get there that night. They did get there. Amen. A couple years later, but they did get there. Hallelujah. They saw the star that night. Amen. That long journey. You're talking about a long way to travel to go to church. Took him two years to get there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen to this. And also, it doesn't say there was three of them. Amen. whole lot of things we got in our scenes don't, ain't exactly right. But anyway. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east. doesn't even say they were kings. You know that song we sing? We three kings of Orion are... Bearing gifts, we've traveled so far. More than likely, there was more than three of them. And doesn't even say they were kings. Star watchers. Amen. There came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Now see, Jerusalem was the capital city. So surely, if a king was going to be born, he would be born in Jerusalem. Amen. No, that ain't the way God does things. Amen. That ain't the way God works. So they went to Jerusalem and they said... Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. I like what they said. His star. See, this wasn't no regular star. Amen. This star didn't act the way stars normally act. This star didn't move the way, you know, usually the stars and the earth rotates and the stars do the exact same thing unless they're fallen or something. But this star, when they saw it, there was something different. Something so magnificent about this star that these men would follow it. Oh my goodness. This star that they called His star in the east. And we were come to worship Him. And we know what Herod did. Herod called in the, the, His fools. I, they wise men, but they were really foolish. They didn't believe in God. They didn't believe the way they supposed to. When he had gathered the chief priests and the scribes, people together there, he demanded them where Christ would be born. Verse 5 says, And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, and we read this a few minutes ago, and now Bethlehem, the land of Judah, it says, are not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of these shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. So Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently and said, Go and find him and come back and tell me where he's at so that I can go worship him too. And yeah, he was so full of baloney. It wasn't funny. Amen. He wanted to find him, but he wanted to kill him. Amen. So the wise men, listen to what happens here. They're at Jerusalem. They have followed the star. They don't say that we've seen his star in the east and we have followed it to here. That's what they were talking about. That's how they got to Jerusalem. It says, when they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. My goodness. Isn't that powerful? This star went before them and they followed it. That's powerful. This wasn't just, well, I see a star and I'm going to walk toward it and it never gets any closer. It never moves. It stays in the same spot. This star moved. It had movement of its own. It was His star. 
It was a star like never had been before. And it was leading them to a star that never had been before. Amen? My goodness. It was leading them to the bright and morning star. Hallelujah. Matthew 24 and 27 says, and talk about the east part of it. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Did you know that the temple door faced the east? I'm talking about the tabernacle. The tabernacle door, the entrance into it, they Whenever they set up the tabernacle in the wilderness, they set it to where the entrance was facing the east. Thus, whenever the priest went into that, he was coming from the east. Amen. Amen. He was coming from the east. And through this entrance, he would make his way up through the ceremony till he had finally, one time a year, would make his way into the Holy of Holies and put his blood on the, and put not his blood, put the, the blood of the Lamb on, on the mercy seat. But Jesus, who would come from the east, the eastern gate, he would be sent of the Father. Oh my Lord and my God. And he would come and he would enter. He would begin that night. That night he would begin his priest here on earth and his journey would take him all the way into the Holy of Holies when the temple veil was written in twain on crucifixion day and his blood would be applied to the mercy seat in heaven for the sins of man that would be the forgiveness that we would need even today all the, all the sins of the world in order to get forgiveness you must turn to the Lamb of God there is no Buddha that you can repent to there is no Muhammad that you can repent to only Jesus saves there is one name given of under heaven whereby man can be saved and it's the one of the only begotten Son of God born of a virgin in Bethlehem that this star God created this star especially for Him. Amen. There was a star born that night in the heavens and in the manger. Hallelujah. And this star would lead these wise men to the place where Jesus was at. Some probably around two years after they had first seen the star, they would go into the house where the young child was. And these men, all educated men, would bow down. Notice how many years they'd been watching stars. This is the only one they'd ever seen that caused them to travel all the way that far. There's something different about this star. And I believe that whenever they came into the house and they bowed before that king, I believe they saw the end. My goodness. The reason for their journey. When they looked upon Him, they looked upon the grace of God. When they looked upon Him, my goodness, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So God would commission a host of angels to announce His birth. He would create a star. Now many scholars fight over this. Because the wise men said they saw his star in the east and they came from the east. And many of them say, well, the star must have been in the west. And they were talking about they were in the east when they saw the star. But this star moved. It wasn't like other stars. And how many people know that Israel, Jerusalem, Bethlehem, if you look at it geographically, it's in the east. Amen. This star led them to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God created His star. My goodness. Say, hey, Brother Billy, how you know Jesus is the morning star? Well, that's what He calls Himself. Let me give you the Scripture. Revelation 22 and 16 says, I, Jesus, have sent Mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. How about that? God uses a star to lead these wise men to the star. You see, this star was different that they followed and so is the star that we follow today. My goodness, there's a song that says, Wise men still follow Jesus. Hallelujah. This star was like no other star that's ever been known to man. And this Jesus is like no other. Like no other. That's the only way to put it. Nobody like Jesus. Old folks used to sing a song, Can't nobody do me like Jesus. That's the truth. <clears throat> Only place for you to find salvation today is to go after that same star. Hallelujah. Follow the star like the wise men did. My goodness. And they would be warned in a dream not to go back to Herod and tell him what was going on. That just made Herod matter. Herod would decide, when, well, when did this star appear? Well, about two years ago. Well, then let's kill all the babies. 
two years old and under. And that was even prophesied in the Old Testament. I'm telling you, this thing is more than just getting, let me give you a gift and I'll get a gift and we'll sit down and eat a cheese ball. This is the greatest event in the history of mankind other than Calvary. So much so that God the Father would proclaim it from the heavens with the heavenly host. That He would create a star especially for this night. A star that would lead these wise men to the bright and morning star, Jesus Christ. And many, many, many more prophecies He fulfilled. <clears throat> prophecies still being fulfilled today. Amen. Someone posted the other day on Facebook, and I probably read more junk than I know to, that science has pretty much done away with the creationism. That's why they put it. Has done away with creationism because they can explain that with evolution. And I put on there, there's a reason they call evolution a theory. Because it cannot be proven. There is more evidence to back up the Word of God than there ever has been to back up the theory of evolution. Every time they stick a shovel in the dirt to try to uncover something that proves it wrong, it proves it right. From the foundation of the world, Jesus Christ began His journey down through the ages of man, my goodness, to be birthed in a stable in Bethlehem, to be the light of the world, to give us eternal life. My goodness, and if we follow that star today, we will still find eternal life. There's a song they sing, there's a new star shining. It wasn't just shining in the sky, it was shining in that manger that night. Hallelujah. Are you glad for Jesus? Amen. 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 He is God, and besides Him there is no other. Amen. Hallelujah. God manifested in the flesh. Somebody else have something tonight?